During World War II, the ever-increasing threat of invasion from Nazi Germany meant there was a need for increased numbers of airfields to combat the Luftwaffe. Locally, one of these important bases was RAF Bewley. RAF Bewley was one of 11 World War II airfields located in and around the New Forest area. RAF Bewley began life just outside the village of East Boulder, across the road from the World War II site. In the very early days of powered flight, in 1910, the site was opened as a flying school. By World War I, the airfield became home to the Royal Flying Corps, the predecessor to the RAF, for use in training pilots. It became known as RAF Bewley from 1918 until its closure in 1919. By the Second World War, the site was not suitable for use by much larger aircraft and the increase in volume in traffic. So a much larger site was built across the road. Constructed between 1941 and 1942, it became operational in August 1942. Actual rubble from bombed houses in Southampton was used to build the runway and perimeter track. Bewley was a large airfield. The three runways alone covered an area of 570 acres. The longest runway was 1,967 yards, with the others at 1,366 and 1,367 yards apiece. From 1942 to early 1944, the airfield was used for Coastal Command long-range bombers such as the Liberator and the Halifax and shorter-range bombers used to protect Allied shipping from U-boats. After Allied victory in North Africa, the Coastal Command bombers made way for fighter bombers being prepared for D-Day. Operation Overlord, the 6th of June 1944, the D-Day landings at Normandy. Hawker Typhoons took off from Bewley, assisted by Douglas Boston light bombers in attacking targets in northern France ahead of the full-scale assault. After the final Typhoon Squadron moved out, the 365th Fighter Group of the 9th Air Force moved in, known as the Hellhawks. The Hellhawks flew the P-47 Thunderbolt fighter bomber in support of the invasion. This is rare footage of the Hellhawks taken during World War II at Bewley Airfield. In July and August of 1944, B-26 Marauder bombers, flown by the 323rd Bomber Group, used the base to attack the German front line. They also provided aerial backup for troops moving inland. After the bombers left in August of 1944, the Airborne Forces Experimental Establishment began testing gliders, glider tugs, helicopters and parachute equipment. Although never called into action, the US Air Force retained the base until 1959 before returning it to the Forestry Commission. A visit to the airfield today creates a fascinating journey through World War II history. The area is very different today from what it was during the war. Most of the concrete runway and buildings associated with the airfield have long since vanished. Only remnants remain. If you take the time, you can still find these places. On a walk around the perimeter track, you can find the base of a flight hangar and several aircraft dispersal pans. It is also possible to view outlines of other associated buildings, workshops and other features. If you look hard enough, you too can identify the outline of the original runways. Part of the original runway still exists today, and it is now used by a model aircraft club. At a nearby campsite, the original water tower can be found. It is still in use today. Also, located on private land near to the water tower are some intact air raid shelters.
Across this vast site, there are other such features which include a bomb storage area, which only a small part of is left, also many other small areas of concrete indicating foundations of vanishing structures. Nature at its finest has taken back possession of the area, but it still holds on to its fascinating history which will live on forever. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like it by hitting the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great videos. Thanks very much.